Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable KSM. Thank you, thank you, thank you, folks. Tell it, folks. Please listen up. Today is a very, very special day. When you say the day I'm a but today there is Uncle. You know, when this show started back in the day, it was called Thank God It's Friday. Now it's called the Kids and Show. But those of you who go way back to the Thank God It's Friday days, remember I have this hot guy, man, on the show. Anytime we call that section the butter section. Anytime he was on, no money I did. Sadly, I haven't, I haven't had him on for the last 13 years. But today, we are breaking the 13. <laughs> <laughs> we are breaking the 13, folks. My guest today, and we're going to be talking, and then we're going to be talking about everything. The only man who can talk about everything and make it exciting is the king of hard talk, as I called him 13 years ago. Put your hands together, welcome. Cuckoo, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, thank you. It's always good to remember my feelings. So, if you have a question, I'm sorry. How can I, Cuckoo? How can I? But just one second. Now that they've seen who I'm going to talk to, we're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, the action will flow. So, folks, stick around. We're taking a short commercial break. We will be right back. KSM show. It's tomorrow at 10 a.m. at Legon, the great anniversary of Prosec. Prosec at 85 will be happening. But before that, I want you to check out the school anthem. Check this out. Cactus Creek, it is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm -mm -mm. Just like home cooking. Cactus Creek, your soul will thank you. Call our WhatsApp 055 039 5007. As 
Super Essentials has good news for you. If you're in Takradi and its environs, don't worry. You can pick up a Zipa Essentials jacket at Ruler Unisex Boutique in Anaji, Takrade, Queen of Peace in Takofo Road. Call or WhatsApp 0544-548766. The KSM Show. Hello, we're back. We're back. And Kuku, the reason I'm, I'm having you on today is because today I want us to talk about things, especially contemporary politics in Ghana. And when it comes to contemporary politics and talking about it with excitement and vim and enthusiasm, I can't find any other guest than you. And welcome one more time, man. Kuku, there are too many things to talk about. Let me start with the latest thing. Uh, our friend Alan says he's no longer with the MPP. Your immediate reaction to that before we talk about it. Alan say, I'm no longer MPP. And Kuku, you say? It's a very dicey thing. I, I support Alan in you doing support so. Him? Yeah, I think I do. I do support an extent. The fact is simple. Breaking away from the party is not the best. But the argument is this. The party hierarchy have made up their mind who is to contest. And so the whole thing looks like it's a sham. Now, Ireland has some grievances. Don't forget that in 2008, in April, I think mean 17th of April, Ireland resigned from the party. Mm -hmm. And Ireland was persuaded to come back. And he came back. Now, the issue is this. And let's face it. Look, animosity and then, and then, and then, you know, you know, jealousy, they are all part of the game. You see, Alan contested Nana on three occasions. Mm -hmm. And if anyone tells you that Nana likes Alan, tell the person, I say it is not true. The fact is that- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it is not true. It's not true that he liked him? He never Look, liked he him. doesn't like Alan. Look, you see, it's like a marriage of convenience. I'll tell you, a few years, ago, when Nana went on campaign trail in the Isanti region, they asked him a question. Nipachona, ura Alan wahi. Alan ma, ain't you? So Nana was forced because the Isanti region is really the World Bank for the NPP, just as the Volta region is to the NDC. Mm. So Nana was forced to use Alan. And you must forget, you don't forget it, Nana lost to, uh, how do you call it? Jack? Uh, Atta. So the Alan felt that, look, having lost, let me try my luck again. So Alan contested Nana again and lost. And the last time it was very abysmal because Alan got less than 5% of the votes. So then the argument was this. If Alan thought that he wanted to take a baton ready made from Nana, he shouldn't have contested on three occasions. Mm. So when beat him the third occasion in, in which Alan got less than 5%, then I said in my heart that Alan would have a Herculean task to really lead the party. Now, mm. politicians don't forget easily. So Nana hasn't forgiven Alan for daring to contest him three times. And so the argument is this, that Nana is deceiving the public. Not deceit, but it's a political game. The first set of uh, ministers always included Alan. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so Nana tells the public, or tells the party, in spite of the fact that Alan has contested me, I still bear him no grudge. That is a big lie. If he didn't take Alan, I'm telling you, you wouldn't have won the next elections. It's simple. Mm. So politics is more to do with data and numbers. And as we, as we the interview unfold, I'll bring you some other perspectives. So I think that Initially, I spoke to a confidant of Alan on Friday, and he said on Monday, Alan would resign. Now, the argument is this. I thought Alan would be there, available to anybody who won the NPP flag bearer, you know, uh, uh, position to persuade him to join. But then the surprise is that Alan is now going solo. And don't forget, 
Dr. Reku uh, uh, Birbe really did it in the past. So it's not a new thing. Mm. As to whether Alan will come back the second time is something I doubt. And I think that his connection to the NPP is really finished. When uh, the results of the primaries came, did you suspect that Alan would, would back off like that? Or you thought he would still remain in the party and influence it? Yeah, intuitively, yes, I did. Because don't forget, Alan had complained that there had been some sort of intimidation. It happened in 2007. Uh, 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 and then Alan really had to resign. He was persuaded he came back. Now, the issue is simple. Politics is full of so many, many, you know, perspectives. And, 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 and that is why, you know, really very religious people and very gentle people cannot really be part of it. Because there are machinations, you know, there are so many on the ground things, unfair things that are done. And it's all for a simple reason, just to garner votes and then lead a party. So I think Alan is not tailored for such intrigues. And that is that is his Achilles heel. His problem, that is, it's unsurmountable that he is, he is too fair to his detriment. So, if you so, would not say... Yeah, so with this kind of judgment you you, you come out with, Yes. Is he yeah. then poised to become president? If, if yeah, the, at, the, at the primary level, he couldn't, the primary level, he couldn't, then how can he take the bigger picture more if he doesn't have that go get it? You know, that, that the, the characteristics you're talking about. Oh, yes, but a characteristic, don't forget that Alan now, if, if he's now going solo, he's his own boss. He's not going to take instruction from any chairman of the party as to what to do and not to do. So the man is now self-sufficient. And so he wants to go and he is following his vision or his dream. That is the difference. He has got no party to tell him what to do. Mm. So he's like an entrepreneur. And you know, Alan is naturally a trade conscious man. He's an entrepreneur. He's got so many good things, but I have to tell you, Alan never got good spokespersons for him. Look, mm. Dr. Reku Brebe invited me some time ago that he wanted me to really go and speak for Alan. I said, I've been in Alan Khan's once and he dismissed me. And I didn't take it too harshly because I'm related to him on his disturbed side of the family. That is his mother. Mm. Alan's mother is a younger sister to my grandfather. You understand? Mm. Who is called Mrs. Victoria uh, Tremantine, but she's a well sin. So when I was with Alan, I was the only person who did not take everything you know, down. I was an editor for a paper called The New Vision, and we found a way to project Alan. And so I disagree with so many things. And uh, I'm sure that most of them have found me that almost everything I said have come to pass. I have said something. Alan lost the opportunity in 2007. That was the oh, best opportunity. Where, 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 where do you place him now? This whole new, uh, oh, no, no, no. Movement, new movement for change. The movement. Oh, uh, Afro Pranto, the whole nine. What, what's I mean, your of that? I mean, you know what? I mean, Afro is a very fragile animal. I mean, the wings are so fragile. Yeah. And I'm telling you, why Alan selected it is something I can't believe it. You know what? This very man used Afro Pranto, uh, this man, called Blameza, right? Yeah, and I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, you know, people did not go deep into history. We are there. He never got any good thing. And so after Frank Tor and I was thinking that Alan would be even color conscious. The one he took is not beautiful. <laughs> he should have taken the one with so many colors to attract you. He took one with brown and black. With all due respect, I don't really love the symbol at all. Yeah. After Frank Tor is a very fragile thing. So the enemies of Alan would say that, look, when you even use it as an analogy, the man has taken the wrong thing. Then PP came with what? Osuno. It's so strong, it makes mistakes. Alan could have come with a lie on anything to raw or to do something. After I, from talk, what, what I mean, <laughs> docility and everything are, are beautiful when you are so, docile. Having, having said all of that, do you yeah. think he stands a chance of he's making a no, protest? Alan will not win. No, Alan cannot be a president. He will not. No, he not win it. He's a, yeah, he's no, he can't. The structures are not there. Look, you need structures to win is, because... Is, is it enough to know that 
I don't have the structures, I don't have the base, I don't, does he have the constituency? What, what is the agent on? Look, I'm telling you today, and I'm saying it, I don't have any apology. The man to beat is Ken Ejapon. I have said a long time ago, mm. and you know, because I'm no, I'm, I respect Alan, I have decided not to speak in public. But I spoke to some Alan candidate that I'm telling you, the man to beat is Ken. Believe you me, everybody knew that everything would be skewed to help the vice president. Now, that was no doubt. But when Ken beat Alan, he told Alan that he has lost the pecking order. Surely, Alan has lost it. It was the position he had that persuaded him that it's not going to work in the party. And as I told you, Nana doesn't like Alan in any way. Nana doesn't like Alan. Quote me. He doesn't like Alan. And I'll give you reasons that Baumia will not win the next elections. I can bet you Baumia will not win the elections. If so you, you, you say, for example, you're saying that if he does become the flag bearer for the NPP, he can't win the election? Look, NDC, NPP is in opposition. As we speak now, the party is in tatters. No, excuse me. What message has the vice president brought? He has got no message. Everything digital. It's not putting money in people's pockets. So they did pretty well in the first four years with the, the free education. But Nana was stubborn. They didn't want to really realign the thing. Look, I got my son in school. You saw school uniform for my son. I don't need the money. We didn't need it. They should have used the money to sponsor people who could not. And to make most of the school day school so that the people would attend schools in their community. You don't get somebody from Bompata to move to Accra, to Achimota Secondary School. Yeah. You buy him a bucket, you buy him a... Look, it's not going to work. The idea is good. Because I have never liked the idea that the Northness were having free education. When I was a young boy in the 60s, in the, in the early 70s, I was in Tamale. I attended Tishigu Anglican Primary School with A.K. Uh, uh, Fuseni, the former member of parliament for Tamale something. Look, I was with him. And I never liked it that the country was simply very what discriminatory. We can just tell that we should make some people pay school fees or they should not. And believe, I'm telling you, statistically, it has been proven that the, the poorest community in Ghana is in the central region, not in the northern region. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we'll talk in those perspectives. But I tell you, let's go back. Alan cannot win the elections. I'm telling you, he has not got a structure. If, if, if his camp calls you, because honestly, uh, talking about he has never had good communicators in his team. I think I saw on uh, Joy of um, some... But he purported to be a spokesperson for Alan. And who knows, talking, ah, this guy, where's the vim? Where's the energy? Can this guy be a spokesperson for a party, a brand new party that is hoping to change Ghana? So let me put that aside. Alan reaches out to you right now. I say, Kuku, my dream, one, you will be my best spokesperson. I want you to be on my Afro-Afro team to help change the course of Ghana, would you? The French will say, jamais, never. Jamais. No, never. Not for all the money in the world. I will never go into Allah. I wish him the best. But I'm telling you, the man to beat is Kenny Japan. My heart and my mind is for that man. And I'm telling you, I got calls from Alan's come to tell me, Kuku, you are a wizard. I said, what is it? I said, I, predict, I predicted that Ken would do beat Alan. And I'm to pass. And so we, we sometimes give trouble. I'm not a clairvoyant, yeah. but I Telling you that we can know things. How are you going to call it now? Now, let's say you are saying that the uh, election has been skewed and so Baumia is supposed to win. Now, you are saying yeah. you can't lose sight of the, the vim of Ken. How do you call it? Do you think Ken is going to pull a surprise? Or I tell you, Ken will beat, look, Ken will beat Baumia. And you see, there might be another split. If the party does not make it's so transparent. I tell you, NPP is finished. Because let me tell you something. It is there. Let's call those mysterious phenomenon. I'll give you an example. Mm. It's been proven that substantive vice presidents hardly win elections. I'll give you. Mm. Atta Mills was vice president to his jerryship, Jerry John Rawlings. <laughs> In 2000, I'm telling you, Kufour beats 
prof. Mm. In 2008, the vice president was Ali Mama. In his own party, Ali Mama got what? <clears throat> 146 votes. That is 6.39%. Nana got 47.97 and Alan got 32.30. They have such a vice president who not even win primary in his own party. Mm. And you tell me today, how can Baumia beat it? Baumia cannot. Baumia is finished. Now, what the NDC is doing is that they are so smart about it. NDC is trying to support the NPP to nominate Baumia because <laughs> it's so easy. Look, I'm telling you, John Mama will just cut through like butter. And I'm telling you, so many people will be pipped. They might not even go and vote. You know what our advice, Baumia? Baumia should learn from the American experience. When Obama was president, Biden was vice president for what? Eight good years. Mm -hmm. And then Mrs. Clinton jumped into the game. She said, you go. And Clinton lost to what? Trump. Then after that, Biden came. And Biden beat the man. You have to really wait. The Americans were the first to, to say that there is no need to go be beyond two terms. I think their first president was called Dwight. Uh, uh, they yes, gave him three terms. And they said, look, you don't need 12 years to really do this job. So the Americans came that if you had two terms, no matter how popular you are, you shouldn't go the third time. Mm. I am advocating today that a day must come. We must make it a one term for Ghana, but make the tenure six years. From Jerry John up to now, the second term of the president has been always a failure. Mm. Mm. Obama didn't do too well in the second term. It is part of life. I can explain. Other complacency sets in, but I'm telling you that the NDC too have a big problem. John Mama is not saliable at all. He's not John what? a lot of baggage. Look, I'm telling you today, mm. if, can, if Japan leads the NPP, he will beat John Mahama. I'm telling you today. Let me make sure that I've gotten this right. Yes. If, and you're pretty, not only for you, you are saying that Definitely, uh, Baumia yes. is done. He's not winning. Look, Jeremiah so, can't beat. He cannot, unless they rig it. He cannot beat Ken. Ken has a message. Look, I'm telling you today. What if, what if, one second. What if, what if at the November 4th, after everything, Baumia has won? Whether they win or Baumier. not. Let, if, yes. that's the, if that's the final yeah. answer that Baumia was the one who has won, what, what next? And that is why I'm telling you that, you know, we would all die, but we would not commit suicide. The issue is that the Ken's camp is speaking to the delegates and telling them one thing. If you make a mistake in November 4, you can't change it in December 2024. Mm -hmm. Look, Baumia is, is what damned. He's finished. Look, the NDC are playing back all this thing. What did he do? Mama is incompetent. They are playing back. You've got a shattered economy. You got a, a, a government that is really under more delegation of corruption. This is what they used against Mahama's time. Mm. Tell me, look, Kenny Japan is the only person who has not served in government. Mm. Alan served in the government for almost seven years. And I said that Alan left the NPP or left Nana too late in the day. Wow. So the man who is oh, saying I'm getting don't... exciting, but as you know, the more exciting it gets, the more I have to take commercial break. So let me break when we come back. More of Kuku was in Jones, folks. The king of half office in the house. We'll be right back. <laughs> the KSM show It's tomorrow at 10 a.m. at Legon, the great anniversary of the second. Prosec at 85 will be happening. But before that, I want you to check out the school out there. Check this out.
happy Yawi, Sudo Zawi. Tomorrow is the D Day, the 85th anniversary of the Crusade. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm mm mm. Just like home cooking. Cactus Creek. Your soul will thank you. You are always welcome. Home. Call our WhatsApp 055 039 5007. Azipa Essentials has good news for you. If you're in Takradi and its environs, don't worry. You can pick up Azipa Essentials jacket at Ruler Unisex Boutique in Anaji, Takradi, Queen of Peace in Takofo Road. Call or WhatsApp 0544 548766. The KSN Show. When they're trying to eject them, <laughs> what do you expect? Have the king of hard talk in the house, man. And you're saying something very, very interesting. Um, you say that the November 4th primaries, you don't see anything else, but Ken is going to invite the winner. Oh, and sure. Then, I have no doubt. I have no, no doubt. doubt. Yeah. You see, the play. message is good. The message of Ken is so enticing. Look, it's so beautiful. Balmia has no message. Tell me, what has Balmia told the public? Tell me. You were so gay as I am. Tell me, what message has he brought to the table? Nothing. No, nothing. We are reeling. We got a minister of finance who is totally useless and is still at post. No, excuse me. Mm. I mean, you got a government that is practicing nepotism. Excuse me. Take somebody like, uh, 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 what I call him, uh, uh, people who have not been voted for. Down quad group. I mean, I mean, are we kids? No, I'm 64 years. I have seen a lot of things. But I'm telling mm. you, Nana mm. has disappointed us. I'll give you something. Look. Kwame Nkrumah was a doctor of letters. He didn't go far with us. Jerry John was a pilot. What did he bring? After Jerry John, we got what? Buzia. Buzia was a social anthropologist and economist. What did he do for us? When Buzia left, we got a man, a diplomat. He didn't do anything for us. After he was called a doctor. When the doctor left, what did we get? Jerry John came back. After Jerry John, we got Kufo. Kufo was a lawyer. What did he do for us? When Kufo left, we got Doctor, we got Professor Atamels, a lawyer. What did he do for us? When he left, <laughs> we got your mama, a communicator. What did he do for us? We finished. We got a lawyer again. We got nothing. We need an entrepreneur. They are the people who build a nation. You don't need doctorate degree to build a nation. We don't need it. We want a man who is pragmatic. Mm -hmm. I, I just then think do the job. Some, eh? Somehow then after this thing is Ed, you may get a call from Kenno. When he when he calls you and he says, Chale, I was listening to you on KSM show. I think I need you in my camp. You're going to jump no, on let it? Me you, let me tell you something I haven't told the public before. Tell me. I had a program with Kenny Japan in 2011 on Netun. It was entitled The Entrepreneur. And Ken really showed to the world how he came by his word wealth. He's been a taxi driver in Bronx in the United States of America. He'd done odd jobs. He said he got his break. When Clinton really asked that anybody who's living in America without good papers to really streamline, to regularize. And so he was working with a, a, a law firm and he had a lot of people he went about and he got some commission. And that was the beginning of great things. So I said, King, you know what? You can never complain forever. The Bible says that the Lord himself like the Jews, but he got annoyed with them because you're always complaining. If the NPP would not give you any position in the party, one day sponsor yourself and then lead the party. 
That was 2011. It is taking 12 years for Ken to really do it. I wasn't part of his idea to really say it now. But I think that he's always said that I have been inspirational to him. I have been spoken to him about politics for 11 good years. He has launched it. And I sat in my place and I listened to his message. And I tell you, the man to beat is what can. I'm telling you today, Baumia has lost the elections. Quote me. Baumia has lost them. Well, I don't need to quote you. I'm sure all the listeners will pick this and they will be quoting you. So well, I don't to, well, I'm I, saying that I, I don't remember if you answered this question. Do, I'm saying, for example, yeah, November 4th comes, yeah, election there, whether yeah. they re, whatever their results are, Baumia has come out. What yeah. does Ken do then? Does he back out and from his own? Oh, no, party, Ken has said it. I think I, I have heard from Ken's camp. Ken is saying that if he really loses. In the perfect and transparent election, graciously, he will support Baumia. So the onus is on the party and the government to know that Baumia is not good for the party. And I'm telling you, he cannot move the Santis. He cannot move Central Region. Baumia cannot move Eastern Region. I'm telling you today. And believe you me, let's sit here tomorrow. You will see that after November 4, God forbid, and I said, Jamais, if he gets it, MPP is in what opposition? I have said it. That is all. <laughs> John Mama will beat him. Not in effort. Yeah. KSM, that is all. We don't need to spend any energy. Because listen, there are things that I don't want to say on TV. He's got so many things, as the English would say, his God is Achilles' heel. He's got so many things that are not working for him. And I've written an article and I'm waiting. I don't want to really try to jump the gun. Mm. And it's coming in print. And I've given reason why he cannot lead the party. God willing, by next week, it will be published. Where I have given reasons to show why Bahamia cannot lead the party. As well, a vice... Really, you're hearing it first about this article. You're hearing it first on the KSM show, right? I love that. Yeah, Alan lost in 2007. <laughs> Look, I was so popular in 2007. Radio stations, almost about six, interviewed me. And I yeah. said, you know what? The delegates at the Congress are dishonest. To have promised 17 people they could be president, they should stay one more night and vote between Alan and what? Nana. We were there contemplating. Then that short man calling Peony came from the presidency and said that, well, things should go. You can believe the MPP split into two way back in 2007 because Nana didn't have the majority to lead the party. And so you will see the second round with Atamels, most people didn't go back. They didn't go back. And I'm mm. sure Alan's camp, people felt peeped. But Nana was desperate to lead because his father has been well, what we call a ceremonial president. Where well, has been there. But I can tell you without missing word, I have met Nana before. I used to have his telephone number. He picks it. He's a nice man. He's a nice man, but he has lost it. I don't know what I used to do with senility that is getting old, but he has lost everything. The president has lost it. And I'm so disappointed in the NPP government of today. So disappointment. We don't need a, a lawyer anymore. I'm a lawyer, but I tell you, if I have to choose between journalism and law, I will choose journalism. I have told them, I have just learned law to guide me. I don't need law in my life, but I, I breathe the journalism. I breathe journalism. And I'm telling you, a day should come where people should train to be journalists. You're going to have people speaking on TV and radio. They are commentators. They are not journalists. It is a profession, not a vocation. People must go to school and learn journalism. We are getting there. We are getting there. I'm telling you, we're tired of titles. Dr. This, Prophet, that's this. Dr. Baumia is an economist. What has he done to the economy? He's done nothing. <laughs> he must learn from Joe okay. Biden. Baumia should learn from Joe Biden and come in four years or eight years' time. He's still a young man. Ken is 63 years. Yeah. Alan is about 69 years. What is the problem? Let me pick your brace on this because... Um... Alan has said that the MPP had been hijacked by a certain group of apparatchiks. 
Yeah. Does that resonate with you? Do you think that the party? Oh, that's true. I mean, the NPP is not transparent. I mean, the issue is that the moment the last squad will come in, the Achin Mafia, they are saying, we've had so many things, they are trying to amass wealth. The argument is that the Achins are playing a dangerous game in Ghana. Look, statistically, and, and, and then when you talk about size, they are small. Look, the Achim people are small in number to the Ashantis. Believe you me. They talk about J.B. Danko. What did J.B. Danko do for us? Tell me. What did he do? So the, it is not good he died in prison and all that. But they are, look, they are making a big thing out of that. Gabi Ochidaku and people doing things. People who have not been elected. They speak like they are elected representatives. That tells you that the government is weak. Mm. I mean, people are watching. Excuse me, that I told Ken, that whatever the, the Lord does is good. I'll give you a biblical analogy. You know, when Joseph said that he had dreamt and his brothers knelt down before him, they said, you are a bad boy. We're going to sell you. And they sold him and then he landed in Egypt. He later became a prime minister and they came back. They never knew it was their brother and they knelt down before him. Look. When God gives a promise, it takes a long time to really actualize. So it is those with intuition and the foresight and clairvoyance who can get in contact. They don't really know. I'm telling you that if Ken does not lead the NPP, they are in opposition. I have said it. It's as simple mm -hmm. as that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that if they don't take it easy and they offend Ken, Ken might also be like Alan, he also goes away. And if he goes, I will support him in that. That is all. The NPP is only increasing the number of delegates, but delegates who are so manipulative, that are so easy to manipulate, I'm the best that we can have. I mean, mm. take somebody like Woon to me, for instance, Woon to me or something, chairman, talks as if butter will not melt in his mouth. Alan has responded to him that he held his hand and brought him to the NPP. If you want the party to really be congealed, you want unity, don't speak at cross purposes. You don't insult Alan if he went away. Because let me tell you, you see, the analogy is there or the example is there. Look, how would you ever think that Jerry Jones' wife, his Jerry Jones' wife, Nana Kunedu, would have left the NDC? And then she got what you call Abranuma, eh? to take the Jinyami from the party away. The elections came, she never even had 2%. Because parties are built on structures. So mm. Alan, look, let me tell you to right now, we have a hung parliament. And MPP, they don't learn. It was their rejected man who went independent, who is saving them. The man they rejected, who went independent, is saving them. The party doesn't think far. Look, let me tell you the truth I haven't told the public before. I was born to be, what, an incrumaist. But I never liked Kwame Nkrumah because of his dictatorial tendency. So I have never supported Kwame Nkrumah. I always tell Kwame Nkrumah is a profligate. They left behind 200 million pounds sterling in 1957. Mm -hmm. And you know, I am a senior. Come on, come on, When you go there, you have a fight. I'm going to go there because let me tell you, if they are strong, why didn't they fight Jerry John? Split we have the only leader we have had in Ghana ever yes. has been coming from no, but I see. Kwame Kwame Kwame. In, um, yes. in, um, you know, no, you see, no, but you see. Let's not, let's not make this an Nkuma debate because okay, I want to talk about contemporary politics and where Ghana yes. is. Don't I, leave your history. No, yes. when you forget your history, you forget things. I use it in context. I'm only telling you that he was a doctor in all this time. We need what an entrepreneur. You build a nation by doing what? Encouraging private enterprise. You don't build a nation by using everything Ghana. Government. What is that? Hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. Yes, it is. The, that was the whole foundation of the MPP. Freedom in development. It is only in wet. It is only in wet. That let's look at private capital, public and private sector collaboration ethics. So I'm saying that it's nothing new for people to hear that we maybe we need entre entre entrepreneurs. The whole Kufo agenda, when Kufo was in power, was that let's develop in freedom, freedom in development. That was the crux of the MPP. When did that change? Or well, it has never happened before. You see, it did. But the issue is that, you see, there are too many who, people who are crooked. And that's how difficult it is to be a leader. I don't think that Nado would tell any minister to really misbehave. You know, you can get it. We had a, a, a deputy minister, um, 
uh, John Mama's government. Or one lady who said that her plan is to get one million dollars by the ten by the end of a term. You remember that lady? Yes. So mm. now the issue is this. You may be a good leader, but you may not have very trustworthy subordinates. And I think Nana really may be a nice man. He comes from a rich home. I mean, Nana didn't need money to buy any food. The argument is that his ministers are very low caliber. I mean, they are people of very, very, very suspicious characters. I mean, how could you be given the ministry or be given a job to do? What have they done? Look, in spite of everything, Alan's people don't know how to sell Alan. Alan left something that has not been beaten up to today. He is the man who invented the Friday wear. It is because of Alan. On Friday, Ghanaians wear their sleeves. Our women don't play with their sleeves. It is Alan's word creation. He but hasn't that, made any big thing out but, of it. But that came from Kufo. Yes, that but Kufo did very well. Friday wear. So even in terms of... Uh, giving credit to where it belongs. It doesn't go to Alano. It goes to uh, J.P. Yeah, it goes to Kufu. But you see, I've been telling you, Shakespeare, I've been telling you all the time, the fantasies have a saying, Osuni hands it, Osuni it, which is ours is ours, mine is mine. But the two make a set. The issue is that you cannot talk about uh, the president, Kufu, without talking about Alan's input. You can talk about Alan's input without talking about Kufu. So there's a subset to one. And I'm saying that, if Alan brought an idea and the president didn't like it, the president would have rejected it. So the credit goes to Alan. But I keep on telling you that Alan is too smooth. And I think that there's a mistake too, I think that he may have made or he never considered. You can't be in one ministry. You must be somebody who is seen to be versatile. I think Alan has stayed in the trade in a ministry for too long a time. He should have tried other places too. I think uh, that is the issue. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, what, what for me is not working for Alan is that he broke away from the MPP and yes. was part of what he broke away from. There was yes. no time that he stood, he came out as distinctively opposed to the agenda of the MPP. Basically, and what they had the response to Alan, they were quoting things that Alan was bragging as his accomplishments <laughs> that they say were party accomplishments and not Alan's. So yes. for me, I think that Alan was too ingrained with the culture of the MPP. So it's very difficult for him now to sell himself as somebody who has never been a part of that culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you see, Alan stayed too long in an camp. Really, you know, out of the eight years, he did almost seven years. He resigned mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. And so seven years for the party, it's difficult to say that it, it, something good hasn't gone. But you see, Alan is a man who really plays his games coolly. But if I were his spokesperson, I would have told the public all the time. You know, he was he was in charge of the Ministry of Industries and the rest. The issue is that they never made Alan to really supervise anything. No cash came to him. Everything was directed from the presidency. So the issue is that Alan has set a trap. He has given a position, but he never given a way for Alan to make any move. Sadly, so sadly Alan was cut. Sadly, he kept quiet and stayed in. This yes, so that that is a suppressive situation, and yes, so um, that is a more difficult sell for him now to say yes, that. I that yeah, yes, and that is a price. Yeah, yes, that's a price. Think, yeah, I think since it's very clear that one one of these days you're going to be a spokesperson for uh, <laughs> Ken. <laughs> I will, no, no, I will you know what? Yes, he has yes. got people. Yes, and it may have people. My duty is that you must recognize what nature has given you. I would not even want to be spokesman for anybody. The issue is that there are a lot of people doing things for the president and they are in the background. So the issue is that mine is that I am only available. Look, I'm a patriot. Look, my family is in the United States for 30 something years. I have never been to America. I have got visa. I don't go because I have said I will not give America my youth. I will not go to a state or a nation that is racist. No, I can be a lawyer and go there and wash plates to pay my school fees. No, I will not serve America. I have been in Ghana and I love my country. And I love my country because I speak my mind. What I'm telling you today, I'll repeat it in 10 years because it is not contrived. Oh my goodness, I was like the king of hard talk has brought so much fire. Unfortunately, we just have only a minute though. That's the sad thing about these things, the hotel guests, the shorter the minutes. Anyway, you said so many things. I wanted to wrap up on the key things you have said so far. 
the one you say Baumia is out, he's done in politics. He's not done in politics. He should learn from Joe Biden and bide his time. He shouldn't go directly because the economy is not a good one for his campaign. So he can wait. Your mama would only have four years. Your mama is not going for eight years. If your mama finishes, he could come back and beat any other one. But now he can't beat your mama. No, he cannot. Uh, but when you wait for four years, yeah. that time, Kennedy will not say, 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 you waited four years, so you go. So Kennedy will come yeah. back again in four years, and then what happens? Yes, but Alan too waited for another eight years. You must learn to wait in politics. Yeah, mm. you must learn to wait. Look, let me tell you something. Ken is bringing something that they have not realized. Ken is the only sitting member of parliament since 20, 2000. He is the man who has received votes consistently in his constituency. He is the only man who can tell you, look, I can give you this vote. All the rest can't. Alan wasn't a member of parliament. Baumia is not a member of parliament. So anything you see, it is people empathy. They might say, oh, I like the man. But you cannot guarantee it. Ken can guarantee some number of people who vote for him. What is the deal? And you see, God comes in mysterious ways. People are saying that he hasn't got presidential ambition or president. What do you show? Who went to school to learn? Baumia was in the Bank of Ghana when Nana picked him. So I think that Ken has brought something which is catching yeah. up with the candidates. Yeah. He's telling so them that. Asked you so many questions in regards to Ken, but it wouldn't be fair because I'm trying to get Ken himself on this platform. Oh, that's is beautiful. beautiful. That yeah. is beautiful. King of Hard Talk, we are not done yet. We are done today. But trust me, when your article comes out, there's going to be a lot of talk. And then at that time too, I'll have you pass by. You know, we are getting into the election year. So now I'm getting people who are really politically inclined and mature to make sensible commentary on the situation auntie trust me and should be a mess i'm a fraud good old cuckoo yeah, can, King I of hard talk. can i say something for the last please do finally I, I think i have to really thank you for inviting me you are a special person and as i keep on saying all the time it's not the number of words or the hours you speak is what you come out of so i think that you have given me a good opportunity to speak to this nation that I love so much. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And we are grateful too. And trust me, you have shaken the very foundations of this nation. And I'm sure that once this program comes out, everybody will want to get to a cuckoo to hear what you have to say on issues. So we do, we say a big thank you. And as I always did from 30 years ago, when you were my active uh, participant, <laughs> we are out of cuckoo. Say, yeah. <laughs>